And how's it going there? My name is Joe and I'm K9, and this is the third time I'm recording this video. So, for good luck, I changed the car. <laughs> anyway, guys, so welcome to my tuning tutorial for drifting in Forza Horizon 4. So, to start things off, we do have the Nissan Fair Lady Z, and I did try this with the RX-7 twice. Video was really good, audio not so good. So, we're trying it with the 370 this time. Or Fair Lady, it's called in this game. Anyway. Should we go to the Rocket Bunny? Yeah, let's go to the Rocket Bunny. Why not? All right, so what we want to do first, guys, is note the horsepower in the car. 214 kilowatts, around 300 horsepower. Um, that is not a lot of power for drifting. It, it's definitely doable. You can drift a car with a 300 horsepower. It, it's difficult, but it's doable. But for ease of life, we are going to be putting a lot more horsepower in this. So I think we're going to go for the 3.8 liter V6 engine. So only 10 grand. Almost doubles our horsepower. Just sure it doubles our torque as well. It does add a little bit of weight to the car, but obviously it's a much bigger engine. Also adds a little bit more weight to the front of the car, so it's not as uh, balanced. But we get a much more powerful engine, so let's throw that in. Now, thankfully this car does come rear-wheel drive, which is what we want for drifting. Okay, you can drift all-wheel drive, it's definitely possible. But today we are doing rear-wheel drive. So we're going to keep that stock and obviously I've already added um, the body kit. So moving on. Aero is not a big thing when it comes to, you know what, let's do the one from uh, Fast and Furious. Aero is not a big thing when it comes to drifting. It's not super important. Don't really worry about it. It just makes your car look how you want it to look, okay? Now, tires are so important when it comes to drifting. You need to pick tires that work with the amount of horsepower you're going to have now i'm with a 3.8 liter v6 engine with twin turbo so i know i'm gonna have a good bit of horsepower so i'm gonna go with race tires because it allows you to be super aggressive and always have good grip so there we go now front and rear tire width are interesting so front tire width often is the, it's the front grip and how quickly your car can pull you out of a corner and how well your car is going to track sideways. So it's very important that you have enough grip in the front, but not too much. So I think I'm going to go 255s in the front. Yeah, let's do that. 255s looks good. All right, and the rear, this is where all the power is. So in the rear, you want tires that will spin, but also give you good forward momentum. So you can do longer corners. You can do the short corners. You can do any corner you want. You need tires that are going to give you that momentum to be able to do those corners. So I think I'm going to go 280, mm, yeah, I'll go 275s. 275s feels about right for me. Again, easily changeable if you feel like you have too much grip or not enough grip. All right, rims don't really matter too much. Pick ones that you think look good. Um, the only thing they can do, the lighter is generally the better uh, for drifting or for racing, for anything. A lighter car is always better, but... Um, we're not racing for millions of dollars here. We're just trying to have some fun going sideways. So wheels aren't incredibly important. You know what? They don't look too bad. I don't want to spend too much time with the wheels. So they look all right. I don't want to make them any bigger. That looks about the right size for me. So there we go. Now, the drivetrain is very important. It's all about how quickly you can change your gears as well as, more importantly, changing gears itself. It allows you to keep the gears close together. Stay in that power band. The all-important power band for your car. Um, also, with twin turbo car, you want to stay where the turbos are nicely spooled. So, you, again, you're in the power band of the car. Also, upgrading the differential allows you to lock your diff, which we'll be talking about when we get into tuning. But make sure you have all those upgraded. Whether you're doing a high horsepower build, low horsepower build, very important that those are done so you can adjust your gears in tuning. Now, brakes. I always upgrade my brakes. I always feel more comfortable when I know my car's going to stop on a dime. So, upgrade brakes. Obviously, it's very important in any car to have good brakes. We're going to be drifting, so we'll add the drift suspension. Basically, it gives you more turning angle, so you can have more angle in the car. When you're drifting, you can throw a nice angle. Uh, very, very nice to have. Not needed, but highly, highly recommended. Now, roll bars are good for tuning, so throw these in for tuning. It does make your car a little stiffer, but you can adjust that in the tuning to make the car soft again. Now, I like putting the roll cage in just for aesthetics, and it does um, stiffen the car up a little bit more. So, throw it in. And it makes it look a bit more like a race car, which I like. 
Now, I do tend to enlighten my cars. You don't have to. It's not 100% needed. Um, if you like a heavier car, which I, I can drive a heavy car. I do enjoy heavier cars. It does enable you to weight transfer a lot more. But a light car is also quite nice to drive. It means you have a bit more horsepower to weight ratio. Now, I'm going to do a very basic build. I'm just going to max this car out just so it's easy um, to tune. And I'll show you guys what... Um, and I'll tell you guys why it's easy to tune. So with a high horsepower build, it means you always have power. You have a lot of power to play with. So you don't really have to worry too much about how the gears work and all that. You can easily compensate tuning for horsepower. But uh, if you really want to get a fine-tuned car, generally a low horsepower car is uh, something that needs to be fine-tuned. High horsepower cars um, generally work even if not fine-tuned. But you can fine-tune it and then they're absolutely incredible. Now, so that is my upgrading of this car. We just sort of maxed it out, I think. Uh, we got to about 1,000 horsepower. Yeah, 758. We're at about 1,000 horsepower. Um, and it's going to cost me 111,000, which doesn't really bother me. It's like 24 million. <laughs> All right, guys. So now that's done. We need to do the all-important tuning on the car. Okay, so we're going to start off with the differential. I always do this backwards. I always go to differential back. Don't ask me why. I, I, I'm, I'm fucked up. I don't know. All right, so differential. So you want to lock the diff for acceleration completely 100%. The reason for this is it allows the rear wheels to spin at exactly the same time at the exact same speed. This is helpful because when you're drifting, it's going to keep the wheels spinning all the time. Okay, and it keeps them spinning at the same time, so it makes burnouts easier, makes keeping the tires going much, much easier. If you don't lock the diff, your tires aren't going to spin, that's going to be really awkward. Now, with deceleration, I do not lock it. I go 85%. It just helps with grip and things like that. I don't like it completely locked. It feels off to me. I don't completely lock it. So, oops, don't apply. Alright, so that's what my diff looks like, and the reasoning for that, uh, again, locks the diff, keeps the tires spinning. Don't lock the diff, but it allows them to spin a little more independently. Just gives you a bit more grip at times. Now, the braking, I do not touch, okay? So, the braking force, you can have braking bias to either side of the wheels. Um, again, if that just sends more power to the brakes in the front or the rear. I don't like doing that. You can do that if you want, but I don't touch it. Same with braking force. It just, um, there's more braking power in the car. And um, you don't have to press the brakes as hard to lock them up or anything like that. So I don't touch either of these. I don't see the need to. Um, I like to have a bit more of a balanced car. Aero, like I said, doesn't really matter. Don't touch it. Doesn't really do anything in a drift car. Now, dampening. This is all about how a car grips and how it rebounds after some body roll. Okay? So I quite like having a bit softer dampening. Not, not super soft, but just under 50% is where I like my dampening. And, okay, bump stiffness is quite nice as well. It's nice and soft. So, in a drift car, you want softer suspension because it allows your car to body roll and allows you to weight transfer through a corner. Same with springs. I want my rear to be a little softer than my front. But, yeah, same with springs. It's all about weight transfer. So, if you have really stiff springs, your body is going to stay rigid and straight, which you don't really want. You want a stiffer suspension in racing so your body stays straight so it doesn't transfer weight so you don't spin. In a drift car, you want to be able to spin. You want to be able to flick that car and get that back end out so you can catch it with some canister, okay? So having a little bit of softer suspension and dampening, roll bars, everything just helps with the body, the weight transfer and getting that body to roll a little bit. And same with roll bars. Anti roll bars are exactly that. They stop your car from having any body roll. We want a bit of body roll. We want that weight transfer. So, as you can see, I've just made it under that 50% line. A little closer to soft than stiff. And that's how I want it. Uh, I'll apply it quickly and get, we'll go back in. Excuse me. I don't know why I'm yawning. It's midday. Anyway. So, camber. So, you often see a lot of drift cars with funny front wheels where they're really towed out, uh, really cambered out. So instead of having straight wheels that are really kicked out, the bottom are kicked out quite far, that's called negative camber. Positive camber is when it looks like the wheels are being kicked in. So these are the base of the wheels, this is the top of the wheels. They're really weird. Um, the reason we want negative camber is when we go 
car to the full lock. The wheels might look like this, but when you turn them, they go flat. They become flat on the turn. Okay? So that's why we want to, because when we counter steering, we get full grip out of those tires. Um, so it's very important that you do have quite high camber, but if you feel like your front end has too much grip, you can lower the camber if needed. You can adjust the tire, uh, tires, uh, the compound or the width or we can adjust the tiny, uh, the amount of air in the tires, which we will get to as well. Now the rear camber, that's all about how much rear camber are on your rear tires. This can adjust how much power you're putting to the ground because less tire touch in the ground, the more they'll spin. More tire touch in the ground, the more grip you got, okay? So generally 1.5 is a good medium. Uh, some of my cars have more, some of my cars have less. It all depends how much power I need to get to the ground. So if you feel like you're just spinning tires and not getting anywhere, give yourself less camber. If you feel like you're just gripping up all the time, you're not spinning any tires, add a bit more camber. There's also other ways you can tune your tires. Again, width of the compound, tire pressure, which we'll get to. All right, time is all about how sharp the car turns in. Generally, I don't touch this, um, but you can touch it if you really want to fine tune a car, but then read the description. It's quite confusing in how it works on a car and it fiddles with all the cars very differently. Uh, generally, I don't touch it. Now, front angle car says so seven degrees. It allows you to um, steer lock a bit further. Very important. Does make your car a lot easier to drive. So I highly recommend keeping that high. All right, gearing. This is all about trying to keep your car in that power band. It is so important that your car is in the power band, okay? Because we need to keep it in the power band to keep those tires spinning, to keep the forward momentum, to keep the car sideways. So tuning the gears is all about how the driving feel is, okay? It's very important that you get the driving feel right and the gears right. We'll explain a lot more of that as we start driving the car. Tires. Now, tires are super important because it's all about your grip. Now, if you don't want to change the width or tire compound of your car, you don't want to waste all the money in the game, the alignment and the tires is a place where you can make up for too much grip or not enough grip. So lowering your tire pressure means that you will have more grip. Now, if you think about it, when people go off-road, they don't inflate their tires, they deflate their tires. So their tires have more surface area on the ground because they're being flattened by the weight of the car. Same thing, lowering the tire pressure means that the tires will be squished more, having more road surface, meaning you have more grip. So if you raise it, it's the exact opposite. Your tires will raise up and become more of a V. So instead of being like this, like normal, or flat when you deflate them, your car tires will do this. And that means you have less grip because less tire is touching the road. Simple enough. Both front and rear work the same. So low, let more grip. High, more grip. Right, less grip. But that's backwards. Low for more grip, high for less grip. Anyway, so that, those are the tunes. Again, I haven't touched the gearing because I haven't driven the car yet. And actually, I haven't tuned a three uh, a Fair Lady Z in a very long time, so I don't actually remember how they drive. So this is actually going to be quite an interesting video. See if I can uh, get her to be nice and sideways. All right, so I do want to get rid of this horrible orange color. I really don't like it. See if anyone's done some cool designs. See if we've got some... Uh, some Drift King ones. Oh, okay, apparently, apparently not. I don't know. No, is that the Drift King one? Or did he have a three? I'm pretty sure he had a 350. Yeah, he did. You yeah, know, it's like one of the ugliest vinyls ever, let's be honest. That green one doesn't look too bad. Yeah, let's get the purple one. Why not? Favorite color is purple. Purple is the channel's color. Let's get a purple car. Come on. There we go. All right, guys. So it is time to leave the festival. And we're going to fast travel to the top of Drift Mountain, that I like to call it. Um, we're here on Fortune Island. That's where I'm going to tune the car because I absolutely love the downhill uh, mountain drifting area. Again, uh, turn 10, playground games, what a fucking road, guys. You, you guys knocked it out of the park, you really did. Alright, so we're going to fast travel to the top of the mountain, have another loading screen, because we all love loading screens, and we're going to do a downhill in a completely um, unadjusted gears, and completely unadjusted uh, tune, other than what we did in the festival. There we go. 
This car has a very interesting sound. All right, here we go. All right, see how the gears are so far away from each other? That's not a good start. I wonder where any of this thing's from. It sounds really weird. I don't think I've ever heard this 3.8 liter engine. I have no idea what engine this car is, uh, is wrong. Like, I know the 3.6 is the R R36, R35 engine. I wonder what this 3.8 is from. Ah, uh, you see that, guys? See how when I changed gear? It dropped. The we lost all power in the car. This engine sounds super weird, dude. Never heard anything like it. Oh man, she's struggling. It is such a weird engine sound. Anyway guys, what I am looking for while I'm drifting is how's the grip? Is she easy to hold angle? Can I throw more angle? Um, I'm trying to feel out the gears. So the gears are a little far away from each other, but they all are too far away from each other. So I'm going to adjust the final drive gear to start things off. I also may... May adjust the uh, rear tire uh, pressure as well. I really want to know what engine this thing's from, though. Like, desperately. As a whole, 400,000 on a downhill and a rear wheel drive. That's really good. That is really good. All right. So, the all-important tuning process begins. All right. So, I felt like the rear had a little bit too much grip. And now I've got my fucking girlfriend messaging me. Of course I do. Anyway, focusing back up. So, I'm going to increase my, my uh, bar or tire pressure to 2.3. A little bit higher than normal. A little less grip. Now, the gearing... Like I said, all the gears seem really, really far away from each other. So I'm not going to fiddle with all of this. What I am going to do is I'm going to fiddle with the final drive. Because the final drive fiddles with all the gears as a whole. So I'm going to push it more towards acceleration. See in the bottom right how they're a lot more clamped up together now. Looks a lot better. So they're a lot closer there now. I felt like everything else was good. I, I quite liked how the car feels for the most part. Like I said, the rear had a little too much grip. Um... <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. Here we go. So we're going up the uphill. Just, I have no idea what the engine this car has, man. All right, so the gears are a lot closer together. I feel a lot more comfortable so far. And that rear has a little less grip. A lot of grip still, but a little bit less. It feels a lot nicer. There we go. She's feeling much nicer, man. That little bit less grip in the rear, making all the difference. Very little, that's a very minor change, very minor. But I do like it. Do you guys know where this 3.8 liter engine is from? It is the weirdest sounding engine I've ever heard. Oh, my game just lagged there, that was weird. Alright, fifth is a little bit of an adjustment, but still good. This engine is throwing me off, man. I I'm trying to think of where it's from. Yeah, fifth gear is still not the best. Little too far away from fourth. What a peculiar engine sound.
Not a bad uphill, man. Really not bad. Could have, could have been better if I had that fifth gear working. Not gonna lie. But as a whole, not not bad, man. Not bad. 370 on the uphill. Really quite good. All right. So as we're going up the hill, guys, did you did you remember what I said I needed to change? I didn't like fifth gear. Fifth gear fell off. It was a little too far away from fourth. So I'm just going to bring it a bit closer. And I'm going to bring sixth a little closer just in case. So now you can see everything is the same except fifth and sixth are a bit closer to fourth. Just giving me that ability to go into fifth without getting kicked out of the power band every single time. So hopefully, guys, this should be the last iteration of a basic tune on this car. Now the reason I didn't adjust all the gears is because I quite like 4th gear. 4th gear is quite a nice gear, it's not too long, not too short, very very nice. I really like 4th gear. I just wanted 5th gear to talk to 4th gear a little bit better. There we go, throw a little more angle, that's it. There we go. Ah, still a little far away I think. Definitely better though. Why am I third? Ah, get down too many times. I was wondering why I was driving so hard. Oh, fifth gear. Hello, fifth gear. You worked. Yes. That's what I want to see. Oh, fifth gear. That was so nice. We got it. I... Oh, very nice. Oh, my game skipped again. My car got kicked to the right a bit. That was super weird. Oh, dude, look at fifth gear, man. Bringing us around. That's what we want to see there, boys. That's what we need. There we go. Not quite as big a run as last time on the downhill, but still fucking awesome. Actually, it might be better. Hang on. Throw that wide. 407, 408,000 downhill. Very nice. All right, guys. I am super comfortable with this car. I am. I think this is a very, very smooth tune. Really nice. I'm really, really enjoying this car. So, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to do a... One final downhill. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let you guys appreciate the beauty of this car's tune. Now, before we do that, I do want to go through one final time with the tune, guys. Say what I changed, why I changed it. So, as always, start at the end. For reasons that I'm weird. The differential. Locked. Keep all those videos spinning at the same time. Keep the free wheel spinning at the same time. So that we get that burnout. So we get those tires spinning. I don't have it there on deceleration because it gives you a bit more grip as you slow the car down. Braking, don't touch. Aero, doesn't matter. Generally, don't touch. Dampening, moved everything to the softer side of the scale so that the car rebounds a bit better and allows you to weight transfer better. Springs, same thing. We want a bit of body roll. We want to be able to weight transfer the car. Push it to the soft. Excuse me. Roll bars, we want the weight transfer. We want the car to have body roll. Not much, a bit. Push it to the soft, a little. Alignment, didn't need to touch it, but generally front camber is about how much front grip you have in the corner. Rear is about how much tires touching the road, how much power you're getting to the road. Gearing, we did a lot of tuning there, pushed it a lot to acceleration, did a little bit of fifth and sixth tuning on their own, just to get those gears nice and close together so they talk better. Tires, I actually tune tires. I don't generally do this. Generally get rough, rough uh, generally get my tires really well on the start. But we did increase the tire pressure in the rear so there's a little less grip. And by God, is this car a lovely car to drive. Now I will be posting this tune on the storefront for you guys if you just want to download it and give it your own go. But here we go guys, time for me to shut up and do the downhill.
There we go guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope this drifting tutorial helps you guys out. I had a great fucking time doing this car, what a beast. Like I said guys, I am going to put this car on the storefront for you. Here we go, into the store, we want to save the setup, we want to give it to my viewers, these cars are fucking amazing. Uh, tutorial car. There we go, name the tutorial car, you guys will easily be able to find the tune. It's under my gamer tag, YTRK9. Here we go into drift. Yep, drift. I want best of handling. And let's see. Uh, car from drifting. Yeah. Car from tuning. Car from tuning tutorial. There we go. Share, baby. There we go, guys. So you definitely can get that car now. All you have to do is search for a game of tech, search drifting, search handling for the Fair Lady Z. I hope you guys do enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it gets you sideways. See you later, guys.